All right, we're rolling. Three point one. Extreme on an interval. Extreme on an interval. So you, you've had this in pre-cal because I know we just finished it in pre-cal. Extrema is one of those math terms. What, is, what does extrema mean, or what does it imply? Natural log. Maximum minimum. Yeah. What'd you say? Yeah. Max min. Extrema. It's it, it's plural. Okay. It's maximums. And or minimums. Minimums. Okay, and we're going to, that's the only time I've written them out there. We're going to call them maxes and or minses. Okay, max or mins. <clears throat> so it's plural. Uh, another way, if you're going to write it without a math context, in the English context would be extreme values. Right? Now, what type of values are they? Are they X values or Y values? When you talk about extreme values. They're Y values. Very good. So extrema are extreme Y values. You have maximums or minimums. That's what makes them extremes, okay? It's not that they base jump into a hurricane and surf to shore while drinking Mountain Dew and eating Doritos. That would be pretty extreme, right? It's because they're either the high points or the low points on a specified interval, okay? And that's what this is. When we say interval, what type of X values are we implying? X interval, right? So that's our independent variable. So we look from left to right, and we're looking for maximum Y values or minimum Y values. Okay, so there's two different types, as you remember. We The first type that we have are the absolute extreme. That's the absolute max or min. The global max or min, it's an interchangeable term. And these things are in parentheses, which means you really don't even need to qualify them. You could just say maximums or minimums. So when someone says maximums or minimums, it's implied absolute maximums, absolute minimums, global maximums, global minimums, okay? So you don't need to qualify it, but you can if you want. So here is the definition. If f is some function on some interval i, it could be open, closed, half open, whatever, uh, then y equals f of c, again, that's the y value, it's going to be defined as the absolute maximum value or the global maximum value or just the maximum value on that interval if and only if, remember that's bidirectional, f of c is greater than or equal to all the other f of x values. That's another way to read that. That y value is greater than or equal to all the other y values on that interval. That would make sense, right? Globally on the interval, if that value is higher than or equal to all the other values, it's going to be the maximum. Now, does that necessarily say it's the highest value? If it were just greater than, that would say it's the highest value. But what does the equal sign kind of mean? It could be the highest value. It could, it could be equal to all the other y values or greater than the other values. This just means uh, the other way to read that with the equal sign is, how about this, no other y value is greater. There could be some that are equal to, but it's going to be the absolute maximum Y value if there is no other Y value greater than it. That's a slight twist on the definition, but it'll be helpful when we're looking for some extreme cases here in a little bit. Similarly, the absolute min or the global min are just the min. It's a Y value if it's less than or equal to all the other Y values on the interval. So similarly, we could say that there are what? No Y values smaller than f of c. So f of c is the minimum value and c is the location. Okay, so intuitively you could just say that it's the biggest or the smallest, but there's a little bit more to that. All right, let's practice like we always do just visually, okay? Uh, the graph of g of x is given below. There it is. Uh, it looks like it's continuous. Is it differentiable everywhere? No, it looks like it's not differentiable where? There's a cusp at C, right, slopes aren't the same. Okay, but that's not what we're interested. We want to determine the extrema of G on the closed interval from A to F. Now, first thing is you've got to understand what the instructions are asking you. When it says to find the extrema, does that mean maximums or minimums? Both, good. Does it mean Y values or X values? The Y values, right? Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and give the locations. I'll do that as well. All right, so um, I guess it's going to be A, B, C, D, or E. Let's just look at the left endpoint. 
is f of a or g of a sorry is that going to be a a maximum or minimum or neither yeah if you kind of come all the way across it does, it's a little bit lower than that other point over there. Is there another Y value on that closed interval that is lower than F of A or G of A? No, okay? So right away, we can say that uh, G has a min of G of A at X equals A. That's how we typically write them, okay? It's kind of like we were talking about the... Um, Minimum temperature during the day. The minimum temperature was 46 degrees at 5 a.m. or whatever. Okay. So that's at the left end point of the interval. All right, cruising along. Does anything between A and B have a shot at being either a max or a min? I guess we're only looking for the max now. Does this guy here have a shot at being the absolute maximum value? Poor fella. Uh uh. Because if he looks to the right, bigger. Sorry. Okay. What about this guy? Does he have a shot at being the absolute maximum? Well, if you zoomed into this relatively small local interval, it would appear that he's the king of his hill, right? And he is. He's the king of the hill. But when we talk about an absolute max or a global max, we're talking about worldwide over the entire interval. Is he the tallest Y value on the interval? No, there's plenty of Y values bigger. So do we have an absolute max? I'll just ask you about that. Do we have an absolute max? Yes. Where is it? It's at D. And what is it? It's G of D. Good. So this right here, we're going to say G has a max or absolute max or global max. Remember, we don't have to specify of G of D at X equals D. Okay. Okay. So notice that one did not occur at an endpoint. We had an absolute min at the left endpoint, and then we had this um, absolute maximum at a turning point. Hmm, interesting. What is the value of the derivative up there at the absolute max location? Zero. Zero. Okay, good. That's a horizontal tangent line. Let's see if I can get it to snap. Horizontal tangent line. So the slope is zero. G prime equals zero, or I should say, G prime of D equals zero. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. Um, did this guy have a shot at being the absolute max? No. What's the value of his derivative? What sign is his derivative? Positive. It's not zero. Okay, cool. Um, but what about this guy over here? What is the value of that derivative? What's G prime of A? doesn't exist, right? We could say it's continuous at the left end point because remember for closed intervals, we loosen up the three step definition. We could say the function is continuous at the left end point because the function value equals the limit from the right, but it's not differentiable at the end point, okay? So that's kind of interesting. One of the things you want to start perceiving is, okay, if we don't have the graph, what are the values of X that are possible locations of these absolute max or absolute min? because we want to narrow down the search. And so right now it appears that an endpoint could easily be an absolute max or min, and a value where the derivative is zero or undefined could be the location. But as we already saw, if it's something on the interior where you have a positive slope or something on the interior where you have a negative slope, could that be a possible max or min? No, because you're going to have values to the left and right that are higher and lower. Okay, very good. Comments or questions on that? So good so far, so far, so good? All right, pretty easy, conceptualizing here. All right, example two, now we don't have a graph. So let's sketch the following graphs and then determine the extrema. So we're taking one step back. It was nice having the graph because then we can use the eyeball test, right? So we're going to do that here. Uh, the graph of x squared plus 1 on the closed interval. All right, so we're going to be sketching, no calculator here. Might want to make this pretty one time. All right, um, and then I'm going to copy and paste that, okay, just so I can reuse it. All right, x squared plus 1, what do we know about that fellow? Yeah, shift it up 1 and it opens up, we're good. So it looks like that, looks like that. Now we're looking only on the interval from negative 1, which I'm going to say is right here, to 2, which I'll say is right here. 
So we're not looking on the entire graph. If there's a closed interval, it's specified, and so we're staying on this little now green section, okay? Now that I have it drawn, it's real easy. Is there an absolute minimum? Yes, we'll say, um, we'll just do it like this. How about this? F has a dot, 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 min of what? One? Good. Now I'm going to put y equals one, just to remember that it's a y value, at x equals what? Zero. What's the value of the derivative there at that absolute min? Zero. So it's not at an endpoint, but it's at an interior place. And again, the derivative there was zero. Interesting. Does this function have a max on that interval? Yes, it has an absolute max or a global max or just a max of what? Five at x equals two. The endpoint, right? What's the value of the derivative on the closed interval at that value? Does not exist, okay? So once again... We have uh, a max and min both existing. One of them occurred at an endpoint where the derivative was undefined, and one of them occurred on the interior where the derivative was zero. Huh. That's happened twice in a row now. I wonder if that's a coincidence or if there might be something to that. Huh? Huh? I think Barbara knows already. Okay, let's see. Example B. I'm having a little deja vu. Are you? x squared plus 1 on the interval from negative 1 to 2. Didn't we just do that? Almost. What's the only difference? Open interval. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole thing, paste it over here, and now I'm going to come back with my little white tool, and I'm just going to make those open. All right, sweet. So now we have uh, a function that is not continuous on the closed interval which means our endpoints options now? No. Ooh, that's, that's not necessarily good, right? If endpoints were possible locations of these extrema we were looking for, and now we don't have that option, we're possibly losing uh, max and min. Does this function have a minimum on this interval? Yes. F has a dot, 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 still has a minimum of y equals 1 at x equals 0. Agreed? And it still occurs with the derivative of zero on the interior. Does it have a maximum, though? Is the maximum still at equal five? If it's open there? Would it be 4.9 then? 4. what? 99? Yeah, infinitely close. 4.99999. It would have to be the first real number less than five. Does it exist? No. So, uh, no maximum value. Man, okay, so here's the first time we got turned away. We actually have a function now that does not have a max. What was different about this one? Yeah, it was an open interval. We got rid of an endpoint. So, hmm, there must be something about endpoints, which means closed intervals, if we want to have both the max and the min, right? All right, let's see if we can squeeze one more in here before lunch. This is a piecewise function. It's going to look pretty much the same. So if you did what I did before, copy and paste it in there from part A, we're back on the closed interval from negative 1 to 2. But notice it says, hey, when x is 0, don't use the parabola. So I'm going to come back over here now at 0, and I'm going to make that an open circle. And then it says, when it is 0, use what value? 2. So it's going to be this right here. Okay. So now I have a function that has the endpoints included. Ah, very good. Do we have a maximum value? A maximum value. Yes, we got our endpoint back. We have a maximum of y equals 5 again at x equals 2. Do we have a minimum value? No, there's no minimum. Priming. We took away a value on the interior where the derivative was zero. That was the location of our absolute min. And so we can't get all the way down as low as we'd like. The minimum would have to be the first real number bigger than one. And again, it doesn't exist. So are you starting to get an idea then of what types of values we need in 
our contention in order to guarantee both the max and min. We're going to need endpoints, aren't we? And we're also going to need pretty much every value on the interior so that the derivative has a chance to be zero or undefined. Okay, uh, we'll go to lunch. I don't think the bell ring. There it is. And we'll pick up with D when we get back. Do, 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 do.